Hi, good morning students. Welcome back to your geography lecture. Here is your teacher Veena Iyer. So today we are going to learn chapter 7 rocks and rock types. So children, have you ever seen rocks anywhere around? Yes, we do see it, right? When we walk on the road, we could see small small rock particles or small small stones, pebbles. All these are parts of rocks itself. Even in the mountains when we pass on, we can see rocks on the mountains. Wherever the construction is going on, there we could see and many other places we could see rocks. So today we are going to learn something more about rocks, the types of rocks. Okay, so let's go and learn one by one. Now, uh, we all have learned last year about biosphere, the three layers of earth, the spheres that contains our atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere right so all three the systems that that is included in the biosphere is some way or other affecting in the formation of rocks now you all know that earth's crust is hard enough earth's crust that is inner part of the earth is very hard why because it is made of rocks and soil right now i have taken up a rock you can see that it has some white pores in it. It's a kind of rock. Now this rock is high, heavy, hard, uniform grains. That means fine grains. It's made up of fine grains. It's non-porous. Non-porous means there is no space for water to get in. Now when I speak about rocks, the further when will we learn, you may know that rocks are mainly made up of two types. Like porous and non-porous rocks. Like some rocks are porous. Porous means they help the water to enter inside it. And some rocks are non-porous. That is they never enter water or any other particles to enter in once they are formed. Okay. Rocks are formed, found on. Now as I said rocks are found on land surface and also below the earth. Rocks are a mixture of different minerals formed by natural processes in the lithosphere. Now, rocks have its constituent minerals with particular proportion while the formation process. The properties of rocks depends upon the constituent minerals and their proportion as well as the formation process where we have certain important major rock forming minerals like silica, aluminium, magnesium and iron. Apart from this, we have many more minerals as well that we get from the rocks. Now, before beginning with the types of rocks, let, we, let us see how many types of rocks are actually there. There are mainly three types of rocks. That is igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. Now, when you see a diagram given over here, it is just a passing on diagram where volcanic eruption is shown below the surface of the earth and the top portion formation is igneous rocks the medium middle portion the formation is sedimentary rocks as shown here and at last the formation which comes inside the magma that is after heavy pressure is metamorphic rocks so we're going to learn about this formation and the types of different types of igneous metamorphic and sedimentary rocks in the upcoming slides now igneous rocks igneous rocks are hard heavy homogeneous now in igneous rocks you may not find fossils. Now what are fossils? They are the dead remains. We will learn about it in the next slide. What are fossils deeply? Now before going to that let us learn what is igneous rocks. Now the interior of earth has a very high temperature right? Due to the sun's heat and variations in the climate the temperature is very high inside the earth. As a result the material in this part is in the molten state. Molten state you can find over here in the diagram that is shown. Molten state. See over here also I am showing the globe I have shown. See over here you can see. So this is molten state. Now sometimes this material gets released through the fissures in the crust. Fissures the pressure exerts pressure that is known as fissures that is occurring normally in the earth's crust. This process when it comes up with high 
pressure or intensity it creates a volcano lava gases dust ashes etc are thrown out during volcanic eruptions now when this volcanic eruption is occurring that is when the molten material known as magma within the crust and lava which comes out of the crust that is shown in the diagram over here this is magma and the outer portion is lava okay so when it solidifies and give rise to rocks these rocks are further known as igneous rocks as these rocks are formed out of the material from the interior of the earth these are also called as primary rocks now please remember igneous rocks are also called as primary rocks now most of mostly these rocks appear as hard and homogeneous now in igneous rocks we do not get fossils now fossils i said you that i'll be showing a diagram so here you can see many kind of pictures which are an example of fossils now fossils are normally the buried remains of dead animals or plants which after having a heavy pressure on it these things remain inside the earth's crust and the geologists they come and search for it they find out by digging out and just getting these fossils out and know that when it was there at what time it was there you know we can understand how many years before we had this kind of creature and all and now do we have it or not they can find everything because these are buried and they are being pressed in and they form their shapes in the rocks okay so these are fossils now before beginning with the sedimentary rocks let me say an important thing to you one of the example of uh, igneous rocks is basalt rock even pumice is an example of igneous rocks okay so this is formed out of volcanic froth pumice is formed out of volcanic froth it is a porous rock that means water can get inside it at its density as its density is quite low it can float on water when you put a pumice rock into water it will float on water now when i come to sedimentary rocks what are sedimentary rocks first of all sedimentary rocks are light in weight they are brittle they are porous again they help the water to enter inside now how sedimentary rocks are formed i have shown the process to you by the diagram over here but let me explain you one by one due to continuous variations in temperature like due to sun's heat sometimes wind sometimes rain this variations what happens is rocks develop crack in it so there are cracks that come into the rocks similarly due to this the water percolating through rocks dissolves the soluble minerals water which seeps down by these cracks they uh, this take up the minerals that is present in the rocks now this leads to weathering of rocks weathering of rocks you can see in the third part over here where the rocks are just falling down by breaking up now they get disintegrated or decompose they just either they deposit somewhere or they due to the flow of these kind of temperature variations they get deposited inside the earth now that is they get reduced into pieces these rock particles get transported by rivers glaciers winds and many other ways which is again i have shown here these rocks come from here and they deposit over these water bodies or somewhere in the land surface itself now one after the other the layers of sediments get deposited in this way so when they come down what happens is they form layers by themselves inside these areas now the upper layers exert heavy pressure on the lower layers and this leads to compaction of material and development of sedimentary rocks now you can find that the layers in sedimentary rocks where some deposited remains of dead animals or plants get buried in these layers at times as i said igneous rocks has no fossils but due to this cracking and variations of temperature and weathering of rocks it normally happens that fossils enter in like these particles of fossils also come with it and they are present in the rocks when you take sedimentary rock you can find out some fossils over inside the rocks now therefore these fossils which are found in sedimentary rocks are help the sedimentary rocks to be generally brittle and lightweight hence they are called as to be porous 
Now some of the examples of sedimentary rocks are sandstone, limestone, shale, corals, etc. Uh, one may also find coal in sedimentary rocks. Now once again fossils I will be giving a definition just listen. Fossils are nothing but the buried remains of dead animals or plants that become uh, like subject to heavy pressure in the earth surface. As a result their impressions get marked in the rocks. At times the buried animals or plants get petrified as well. Now these formation is called as fossils. Okay. Now fossils as I said it helps to provide the information about the life in the period when it was buried. Now, metamorphic rocks. What are metamorphic rocks? It's a mixture of both igneous and sedimentary rocks. When the when some more formation occurs in both, we get a form, we get a new rock as metamorphic rock. Now, metamorphic rock are again a hard, heavy, and with no fossils. So we have two rocks with no fossils. That is igneous and metamorphic rocks. Okay. Now, metamorphic rock. How does it occur? Again, a volcanic activity is there in the earth. And other earth movements constantly take place on the earth. While these are occurring, other movements, you can say it as earthquakes or some other things that normally come up with natural disasters. Now, while these all things are occurring on the earth, the igneous or the sedimentary rocks in that region have in uh, like subjected to uh, tremendous pressure and heat. There is excess pressure that is put up either in sedimentary or in igneous rock, whatever is found in that particular area. Now, due to this excess pressure and heat, some changes are occurring with some chemical compositions of the original rocks. Here, original rock means igneous and sedimentary. Now, when this chemical composition or any changes that occurs, the crystals in the original rock get recrystallized. That is, whatever formation has already been done for the original rock, the reformation, that is recrystallization. Something new is going to come up with the original rocks. This means the rocks are getting metamorphosed. This process is called as metamorphosis. Now hence the rocks formed by such process is called as metamorphic rocks. Now once again metamorphic rock doesn't contain any fossils. These rocks are heavy and hard. Okay. You can also see the table over here of each rock. I have provided some more examples apart, apart from your textbook, which you can find out like how many more types of metamorphic rocks are there and with its names. Now, do you know children that the red fort near Jaipur uh, like is made by sedimentary rock? It's near Jaipur city in Rajasthan. Red stone is found. Now, the red fort of Delhi is made by sedimentary rocks. This rock was normally used for the construction of red fort at Delhi. As sandstone is relatively soft, it was very easy to carve in it. Normally, uh, the sculptures and all, idols and all which you see by stone, it's made by sedimentary rocks. Most of the sculptures and all is made by sedimentary rocks. Okay. Now, when I come up to next thing, the Taj Mahal at Agra is built in marble which is a metamorphic rock which has undergone some chemical composition in it this rock that is the marble was brought from the mines in makrana in rajasthan now you might see that when you go for a boat ride in river narmada through beda ghat gorge in madhya pradesh the river has cut in, cut its gorge through marble rocks which is shown in the image here now these rocks on both the sides are marble rocks that is metamorphic rocks now when you visit it during the sunset or sunrise or during the full moon nights as shown over here you can see an enchanting scene like you will feel so pleasant to uh, have a boat ride over here it's so elegant you know now let's see something that is given from your book the how this chemical composition gets converted from igneous to metamorphosis or sedimentary to metamorphosis. Now the first one is granite. Granite is an example of igneous rock. When there is some chemical composition or changes due to earth's like movements, the rock that forms is metamorphic rock with the name Nis. Next is sandstone, a sedimentary rock. Again with some changes and uh, chemical composition, we get a metamorphic rock called as quartzite. A sedimentary rock as shale, it gets converted to metamorphic rock named as slate, where you write your ABCDs in your childhood. 
sedimentary rock limestone gets converted to marble that is metamorphic rock just now we had an example of it now sedimentary rock coal gets converted to diamond that is metamorphic metamorphic rock igneous rock basalt gets converted to metamorphic rock amphibolite which is also due to like chemical composition and some earthly movements now one thing to remember coal gets metamorphized when it undergoes heavy pressure and intense heat after coal gets metamorphized into diamond hence this coal when it is into a diamond the price increases because there is so much of deep process that come undergoes to get converted from coal to diamond we burn coal to get diamond and form it as ornaments now there is a map given over here for you it's in your textbook as well in page number 43 you can see the distribution of major rocks in maharashtra in this map now you can see uh, and get the answer of the number of districts or name of districts where uh, rocks other than basalt are formed the basalt rock formed out of volcanic eruption has spread over a vast vast region of our state maharashtra even granite rock is found in, found in the eastern parts and in south konkan laterite rock is found in south konkan over here in the diagram you can see i guess you all know north east south west right so this is south this is north this is east and this is west okay so south konkan means over here right similarly you can find some more names by the images and the colors provided to you over here normal gray color is all basalt rock which you can which you can see in the major part of maharashtra granite rock is bit dark gray which you can see in the eastern part and some over here in nande district then last right just in the south konkan you can find then sedimentary rock in the north portion you can find right because of the thick and extensive layers of basalt maharashtra does not have large reserves of mineral wealth therefore mining activities can concentrated in south konkan and in the eastern maharashtra understood children now here we have this lesson almost done now one more information about laterite rock that i am to say is in the coastal region of konkan in maharashtra we find laterite rock now exact area is it is found in ratnagiri and sindhudur district now you have an uh, you have a famous line which is written in from marathi poem regarding this kind of rock that is found because of basalt rock the major form portion of maharashtra is of basalt rock you have a small saying for it which is written in one of the marathi poem i'll just read it for you rakhat desha khankhar desha dagrancha desha hence because it's normally having the formation of igneous rocks which is hard and homogeneous hence this line is meant for maharashtra okay so here we complete with the lesson lemma 7 rocks and rock types still if you have any doubts you can ask me through dcso comment section please go through the tables that i have given you of igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rock where some examples apart from the one which is there in your textbook i have given for your knowledge purpose which you can understand deeply so thank you children bye have a nice day